very much, Paul. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, uh, a fine uh, uh, guest lineup uh, for the show tonight, and we'll uh, get them out here before you know it. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you who they are. Uh, Margot Kidder is here tonight, also a comedian, and uh, Harry Anderson will be joining us. And my first guest tonight happens to be my boss. He is also John Chancellor's boss, Jane Pauley's boss, Gary Coleman's boss, Skip Stevenson's boss, Johnny Carson's boss. Well, let's check that one. Um, <laughs> The list goes on and on. Please welcome the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the National Broadcasting Company, Mr. Grant Tinker. <laughs> Grant, nice right. to see you, sir. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Very, uh, very nice suit, by the way. Attractive suit. Thank you. It, it goes with the job. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you have to have these. Uh, how many people do you have in, under your... Who's, how many people are for you? Are, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know them all, but yeah. there are some 7,000 people 7, at NBC. Yeah. And right. you are the... Help me out with your job titles. You are the chairman of the board of, our, of NBC. Yes. And the... And the chief executive officer. Now, what are those? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, they're, they're exactly what they, they sound like. That we have a board of directors, of which I am the chairman, and, uh, and we meet once a month. And those, those people are very concerned about what happens to NBC and, and how we do, uh, in a business sense, and in every sense. And uh, the, as a chief executive officer, I, I, that can be described in a variety of ways. I think it's simply that the buck stops in your office. Mm. How did you get this job? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I met a, a man named Thornton Bradshaw, who is my boss and the chairman of RCA. He's the chairman of the board of directors for RCA. Yes. The parent the company. super chief. Yeah. And uh, yes, NBC's parent company. And I met him a couple of years ago, and he asked me whether I would like to have it. And uh, I'm, I'm playing this as straight as I can. <laughs> I said, yes, I would. Uh -huh. and, and so here I am, and I'm very glad to have it. Yeah. Uh, have, how have things gone for you since you've taken, taken him up on his offer? Well, they've variously. Mm -hmm. they've, some good, some bad. We, uh, perhaps some people know that NBC is, is not the leading network, for instance, and so we're working to improve our, our standing and uh, and it's a lot of fun trying and we we have great ambitions but for the moment we are not there yet mm -hmm. now how much of an influence do you have say on what gets on the air on tuesday night uh or uh, d uh, who's going to be the next door neighbor on uh, uh, right. different strokes i mean do you actually do that stuff no i no i i participate in doing that stuff there are, there are a number of people uh, many of whom you know who collectively do that. There is a man named Brandon Tartikoff, whom you also know, who is in charge of the entertainment division, and he really has the responsibility for selecting the programs and therefore the things that make up the programs. Uh, I come sort of from a program background, so I, I do like to moonlight over into Brandon's area, but uh, if, there, if there's anything you don't like, take it up with him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not but, my fault. But say you, in your free time, assuming you have any free time, you're watching a television program on this network. Have you ever thought to yourself, uh, a Harriet would be better as a redhead, and then just picked up the phone and said... No. Yes and no. I, I don't pick up the phone right away. I'm not that compulsive. But yes, I occasionally see something that, that, that I think might be improved or changed, and I, and I would have the temerity to mention it to Brandon when I see him. But we, we're, we're pretty calm as a company right now. We, we, uh, we think we're on course, if you'll pardon the expression. And we're going to stay that course, and uh, and we think we're going to come out in the right place. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> you just made that up, <laughs> yeah. huh? Um, it, it seems like uh, I can remember when people, uh, when it was announced that you were going to take this job, everyone said, "Well, good heavens, that's a monumental undertaking." Uh, what made you want to leave the security of a highly successful production operation? Well, it was it was successful, and it was a lot of fun at MTM. But I had done that for 10 or 11 years, and I, and I, and I think that's long enough to do something. And uh, so when, when Mr. Bradshaw said, would you like to try it, he just happened to come along at exactly the right time, or wrong time, depending on your <laughs> point of view. But uh, he, you know, he, he, he caught me at a time when I think I was ready for a change. And I also go back 
twice before with NBC. I actually started in this building in 1949 when, when it looked a little different, uh, even before uh, Milton Berle was across the hall here, uh, which he was a couple of years later. I left it once, came back in 1961, left it again in 66 or 7, and, and so I watched with great interest over the years what happened to NBC, and I was, along with some other people, a little concerned that it wasn't doing as well as it might, and I wanted to play a part in in restoring it to its proper place of preeminence. And so along with a lot of people, I'm trying to do that. Uh, you've also, uh, this is none of my business, but I think that you may have lost some, some dough in this deal somewhere, didn't you? Because you can't still have a piece of that company no, and run the exactly, network. That's exactly right. I mean, yes, there would have been a conflict of interest. Yeah. So the door slammed down the minute I left MTM and walked into NBC. And yeah, I guess you could say I, I lost but, but then I knew I was doing that, yeah. so I did it willfully and foolishly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to, this is a commercial. Ah. You've probably, ah. probably heard the term before. Uh, we'll be back with uh, Grant Tinker. <laughs> Thank you very much. The uh, gentleman, of course, is uh, Grant Tinker. Uh, now, you came from, by comparison, a pretty relaxed atmosphere at MTM to uh, corporate uh, meetings and meeting folks and so forth. What is right. the, the biggest, the thing that you don't like looking, the thing you don't like to do that keeps coming up on a regular basis? What's your biggest headache in this job? Th this suit is, is, is really it. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we were very relaxed at MTM. We had, the, we lived, you know, that it was a California lifestyle and it was just a, Adidas and and uh, and you know, pretty much clothes, it wasn't it just, just the clothes. Adidas, <laughs> just the <laughs> yeah, some, some days and nights and uh, it, it, that's part of it. That the suit represents all the, th the things that I am not comfortable with: yeah. the meetings, the structured life, and uh, and yet on the other hand, that, that's all part of the challenge. Some of the relearning that I have to do yeah. coming back into a big company where I haven't been for quite a while. What about the non-programming activities? What's the what do those entail? There are some ritual things that I do badly, that I'm trying to do better, that have to do with functions, you know, business functions, uh, occasional speeches, and, uh, and, and just meetings and appearances and, and activities that I did not do at MTM. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing on the downside. Uh, now, you mentioned earlier when you, when you took the job, you wanted to restore uh, the network to uh, help, help, yeah, I said. help restore. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to take all the rap if uh, this doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, we, are you making any progress? Are, are yeah, things I, beginning oh, I think to? So. Uh, yeah, without doing a commercial about it, we have some shows, particularly in our in our prime time schedule, uh, that we think are are, are promising. And uh, and while they haven't found their audience yet, in every case, I'm talking about things like Cheers and. And, uh, and Taxi, which we took from ABC, and, uh, thank you. and, uh, and Remington Steel and St. Elsewhere. And th n these are new shows that uh, we're having trouble getting sampled, but in which we have a great deal of faith. And, and once those begin to do as well as we think they should do, I think we will be you know, well down that road of recovery. Yeah. Uh, is, is there anything that um, uh, has bothered you that you can't solve right now? Well, yeah, what bothers me is that we can't solve it by next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. that it's the, it's the, the, the slowness of it all. That I'm very impatient in how long it takes. And that was a surprise to me. I really thought as an ignorant outsider before I came back that, you know, just a little fooling around with the schedule and we would be flying. Mm -hmm. and, and it turns out that audience habit is a, is a thing that moves very slowly. Yeah. And uh, yours, by the way, is moving upward. Oh, slowly but upward. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's not get carried away here. I didn't uh, mean to embarrass you. <laughs> uh, now, when you were the head of MTM, occasionally I would see a quote from you where you were critical of procedures, business dealings of networks. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know specifically what those were, but uh, do you now find yourself guilty of what you were criticizing earlier sometimes? Turns out uh, that criticism was unfounded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a mistake, no. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, no, of course. You, the, when you're on the outside, you do tend to, to, to be a little critical of networks because they have the power. They're the buyer and you're the seller. And they don't always please you, particularly when they don't buy what you're selling. But uh, we try at NBC to behave now in a way that I 
wanted networks to behave when I was at MTM, and not that NBC didn't behave that way before, but we want it to, to be a place that creative people, the best creative people, will run to and want to work. And, uh, and, and I think we are, with Brandon Tartikoff's help, turning it into exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me ask you one final question. Did you ever eat up at the commissary? I, <laughs> I have not done that. Haven't done it. No, Bef I, before you go west, just drop yeah, in there. I yeah, will, I will. Yeah. Is it as good as the commissary in Burbank it's, I have eaten there? It's, it's lip smacking good. It's a hot meal at a fair price. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, gee, uh, this whole thing has made me very nervous, but uh, you're a delightful man to talk to, and I appreciate your time, sir. Well, thank you. Thank it's you very much for being here. Thanks. Mr. Grant Tinker, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have to go away for station identification. We'll be back.